going down. I don't even want to admit this, but I've been doing a lot of slip bobbering lately. The bite's been kind of funky, and as much as I love fooling fish with artificials and trying to uh, just trick them with the fake stuff, there's a time and a place for everything. There are days where you need live bait, and you're just flat out going to catch more fish with it. We've had a lot of local derbies lately where three fish, four fish, wins it gets you a paycheck and uh, just getting those couple extra bites with a slip bobber and a leech has been a lifesaver for uh aoi points <laughs> so i thought i would do a little i guess i want to call it almost like a rapid fire slip bobber video with breaking down my setup my go-to i guess all around slip bobber setup whether it's seven eight foot in the weeds or out to about 30 foot deep is going to be the same typically and that's a thill pro series bobber the biggest size they make you look on the shelf and you're like that one looks like it'd be a good size for walleyes then buy the next size bigger i believe it's a 2xl one inch which some bobbers their size is based on how much weight they can hold i believe those pro series the one inch is the diameter of the actual bobber you get the biggest one you can i like the weighted one and uh, the reason for the biggest one that you can is it lets you put more weight below it. So your more weight below it, the faster your stuff gets down. And so what I do is a, that big 2XL bobber to a quarter ounce egg sinker, uh, a bead and a swivel, about a two foot fluorocarbon leader, eight pound test, 10 pound test. And then I use a 16th or an eighth of an ounce wide gap jig something like that vmc hammerhead short shank wide gap with a jumbo leech and you can use minnows you can use a half a crawler when the bite's really tough day in and day out leeches are kind of the all around work shallow work deep in the mud work when you know fish are in the weeds even if they're keying in on bait fish they eat a leech out in the mud you got bugs hatching uh larva and they eat a leech as well and the whole purpose of that big quarter ounce egg sinker and a 16th or an eighth of an ounce jig is it just gets down really fast. And most of the time what I'm doing, if I'm out deeper on the weed edge or in the mud flats or whatever, I'm idling around with 2D and down imaging. When I see a fish on the graph, I put the motor in neutral, instantly throw that bobber back. The boat will keep going forward while you're in neutral, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet and I leave my bail open, letting that sink down. And if a fish doesn't eat that, take that bobber down, for me, it's like 10 seconds. And I reel up and I keep idling. If there's a lot of fish around there, say I went over a pod, there's four or six, eight fish, I'll wait up to 30 seconds, a minute, which feels like 10 when you don't get bit. But then I keep moving. And that's something that if you're doing solo or it's you and a buddy, it's really easy to just, it's not relaxing. You're not just soaking a bobber. You're constantly going, constantly moving, but you're gonna catch way more fish. So typically if I'm up in like cabbage weeds, coontail weeds, 10 to 18 feet of water, I'll use a 16th ounce jig. And uh, once I start sliding out into that deeper 20 plus all the way up to 30, that's when I just, I bump it up to an eighth of an ounce just to get down a little bit quicker um, especially if it's windy, it just helps pull that bobber stop and line through. Eight pound suffix braid. I used to use mono occasionally. And if you're sliding that bobber stop and constantly adjusting it, the abrasion is crazy. Your line gets all gnarled up and just braid is the deal for it. And then that's why you're on a fluorocarbon leader and that no stretch also you need for the hook sets. And this is why the rod is so important as well. I like a 7.6 medium light fast, something with quite a bit of load because you don't wanna just set the hook on those fish. Think about the angle that your line is at to a bobber going straight down. You know, sometimes it's almost a 90 degree angle. And when you set the hook, all you're doing is slingshotting that bobber, but the jig down here is hardly moving. So don't just set the hook. 
you need to reel into them so that that rod starts to load up and then I'll sweep hook set, just a reeling hook set and you will land so many more fish. I typically just wait about five seconds after that bobber goes under and then hit them and gauge it from there. If you miss a couple fish in a row, wait 10 seconds. If, they, if you set the hook and there's nothing there or they're hooked deep, wait less, wait two seconds, wait three seconds, but five seconds or so is usually good. And just remember, reel into them and load up and just sweep as you're reeling and you're gonna land so many more fish. And that seven, six, medium light, fast, is just the all around best bobber rod I've ever found. This one's an Elliott and it is, you don't have to spend $269 on a bobber rod. You can use a $39 stick, but look for that seven, six, medium light size and action of rod and it's gonna be great all around. Plus, it makes a great Lindy rig rod, light spinners, and hair jigs. If you like casting light hair jigs and marabou, it's the deal for that too. So you get kind of a great multi-purpose rod, but ideally you just leave a slip bobber rigged up on it all the time for if you need one, because you can't rig one of those up in about five, 10 seconds like you can a jig. If you're grabbing fish, <laughs> you know, it's a few minute process if you're fast. So seven, six, medium light fast. Longer the better, something with a little bit of load so you can reel into those fish and not have them drop the hook because they feel you on that stouter rod as you're reeling up. One of the best tips I ever got that had anything to do with bobbers was actually from my buddy Brad Hawthorne. And before you tighten down that slip bobber knot, mash some chapstick in there in the knot and spread it out on there. It almost makes it like waterproof. And then when you cinch it down, you're not gonna have that knot fraying and like there's nothing worse than you fish not even half of a day and your bobber knot is all frayed and loose and you have to retie because then you have to retie the whole rig to put a new one on typically unless you're you're really crafty and know how to do that fancy knot to tie a slip bobber on bare hand or whatever but mash some chapstick in there tighten her down i leave a longer tag quarter inch about so that I can re-tighten it any longer than that and it's going to snag in the spool when you try to cast so you got to play with that happy balance but leave it a hair longer and I'll actually take a lighter and just barely burn the ends of that and you don't want to like you know burn them down an eighth of an inch so that you have that big knot on the end because that's what's going to snag in your spool but I just kiss it with a little light just to melt the tip together so that those uh, the threads can't unwind. That's another reason that I like, I, I've got these Thill bobber stops that they seem to do better of uh, not unraveling like that. You get some of those bigger, I don't know if they're nylon or what they are, but it's like three bigger strands or cord and they just, they love to unravel on you and it's just a pain in the butt. So typically when I'm in search mode driving around, I like to go into the wind if possible. And then when I grab a fish and throw the boat in neutral, uh, you throw your slip bobbers out the back and let the wind take them downwind out behind the back of the boat. And that's especially important if you're spot locking. And if I'm in an area where fish are really scattered, it's just one here, one there, I don't have my trolling motor down because I want to be able to move and not have one more thing to worry about. But if you get to an area that's got quite a few fish working it, just leave your front motor down, remote in hand. And when you're idling around and you graph fish, kill the motor, hit spot lock once you're about 20 to 40 feet upwind from those fish, and then let, the, let those slip bobbers drift out back behind the boat with the wind, and uh, you're sitting up ahead of those fish, and it's so nice for keeping your line straight, not getting that big bow, so when it comes time to set the hook and reel in on them, you don't have any funny business going on. You don't have that big loop to try to pick up slack and have them feel you and drop the bait. A few other quick tips that'll really help you slip bobber and walleyes. Use your rod as a length estimate measurement tool to know how deep you're set. Seven and a half foot rod, if you double the length of that rod with your slip knot, that means you're set about 15 feet deep. You can do the same thing with your arm span. Do a big old arm stretch holding your hook and the slip knot. There's six feet. There's 12 feet, there's 18 feet, there's 24 feet. Then you know real quick how deep you're set. And uh, what I'll usually do starting, just to start out the day is set it at a set number so that I know like 20 feet. If I'm gonna be deeper weed line, if I'm up shallow or 10, 
Uh, and then when you're graphing fish and you see they're in 22 feet, you know that you're set at 20 feet or whatever that number is. And then it's real easy to make little one and two foot changes up and down from there. So typically I'm gonna keep the bait about a foot or two feet above the fish. And that's the ideal situation where they'll come up and chase it and eat it. You got days where they're just fussy and you got walleyes being walleyes and then you gotta be right down in their face, eye level. Uh, and basically if, you're, if you are idling around and you're dropping down on fish with your bait a foot or two feet above them and not getting bit, start lowering that down. You don't want it on bottom, you just want an eye level six inches off, maybe a foot off bottom. Whatever level you're seeing those fish on 2D and DI, and uh, that can be a day saver for fussy fish that just aren't willing to come up and close the gap. Or maybe you see them on your electronics coming up two feet to look at it, but they won't commit. A lot of the times you just lower that bait down a little bit farther so they don't have to go out of their way to get it. It's tough to say no when you're just swimming by that piece of bacon. It's like, all right, got it. <laughs> Don't want to have to work for it. While we're talking about fussy fish, walleyes being walleyes, if I'm getting turned down a lot, I will go to a bare hook. You know, that little VMC live bait hook, the tech set one with the nice bend that keeps the bait on there. And whether it's a jig or a plain hook, I just hook this the leech one time just behind the sucker you're gonna lose more leeches, but if you look at that thing hanging in the water, it is just gonna dance and look tasty. And as soon as you start double hooking, sometimes they'll spin if they're moving too much or they'll foul up a little bit. So just that, that single hook behind the sucker and right behind the sucker, uh, because it's a little bit tougher there for that hook to pull out. But if they're being really picky, I will do that plain bare hook. And the reason that I don't run that the majority of the time is just because it's more likely to tangle up. You've got that egg sinker crashing down to the bottom and a light hook is gonna be coming higher than it above it as the egg sinker is crashing down. So you're more likely to get that hook getting caught in that swivel or your line above. With the jig head and the egg sinker, they'll kind of fall you know, about the same time frame. So it just helps keep everything separated and straight. And another little thing you can do is when you cast that slip bobber out, before it hits the water while the bait's still five feet in the air or so, just feather that spool with your hand so that instead of it laying and hitting the water all curled up or whatever, as you tap that line with your, your finger while it's in the air, it'll slow things down and it'll lay it out flat. So it's almost like fishing, fly fishing, which I'm terrible at. But right before it hits the water, you want it to just lay itself out nice. And that just ensures that it's not landing in a weird mess where it's gonna fall and get all stuck and tangled in itself. Keep it straight. As far as the leader goes, I would say I'm most commonly using a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader, suffix advanced fluorocarbon, strong, clear, abrasion resistant, 10 pound, a little bit thicker diameter because it's less likely to get tangled and any heavier than that, you're gonna run into some line shy walleyes, but I will go down to eight pound tests if I'm fishing shallower, clear water, zebra mussels, just spookier fish in general. One of the nice things about that Phil Pro Series bobber is it's got that brass grommet and it just really helps the line to shoot straight through there and get down nice. If you use a bobber that doesn't have that brass grommet, a lot of the times what's gonna happen is your bobber will be laying sideways on the water and your line isn't shooting through it. It's just, it gets kind of hung up in there, maybe on the edge of that plastic. And you'll sit there and realize all of a sudden that, hey, my bobber stop is 10 feet above, above the bobber. Like, why isn't it going down even though you've got weight on there? And so that brass grommet just lets it slide through. I like the eight pound suffix 832 braid because it's got a thin diameter and it flies through that slip bobber. But if you run any thinner line than that, you're gonna run into issues with your bobber stop. You know, once you get down to like that six pound braid or lighter, just that thinner diameter, it seems harder to keep that bobber stop stuck where it's at, tight enough on there. So eight pound is kind of my go-to, but even a 10 pound braid will work great. As far as keeping the leeches cool on the water, a little trick that I learned from a buddy is to freeze water bottles or Gatorade bottles. I got four that I constantly cycle through the freezer. I'll bring two or three out that day with me. And uh, instead of dumping ice in there and having to worry about that, 
you throw one or two of those frozen Gatorade bottles in your cooler and they'll just slowly melt throughout, you know, a few hour process just to keep that water cool and consistent and not shock them with dumping a bunch of ice in there and getting them all to ball up. And a lot of times, you know, if I'm going on a day with a few people or I'm going to somewhere that we're going to catch 20, 30 walleyes and I'm bringing a pound of leeches, I'll leave them right in that big bait cooler and then I'll use like either a, a XL bait puck, like you'd use ice fishing, or the Strike Master bait bucket. I love this because it's insulated. I can put as many as I want in here. It keeps them a little bit cooler, and I'll leave this out to grab from while I'm, you know, on a school or on a pot of fish. Once in a while, I'll throw a few ice cubes in there, and uh, just leave enough in there to whip through a pot of fish, and then reload it for my big cooler. Well, there isn't a whole lot going on with this video as far as fish catches and me talking you through that. I'll throw, I'm assuming, a few clips uh, from today over the top to go along with what I'm saying, but I just wanted to spew out a few of these things that, these little tricks and tweaks that just make slip bobbering a little bit less of a headache. It's kind of like, to me, the drop shot of the bass world where if you need to get bit, that's gonna make it happen, but at the same time, it just is not fun to have to rig them up and constantly redo your dropper or loose sinkers or whatever. So it's similar in that sense. And it's like, if I don't have one rigged up before I'm on the water, I'm not gonna fish it. So I hope you use these on your own local waters to help you catch a few more fish. If you're not subscribed to the Target Walleye email yet, I don't know what you're doing because uh, that's the main deal. That's where we put all the juicy, good info and not just from this Yahoo, but from everybody all over the walleye uh walleye world so targetwalleye.com sign up free i'm not going to send you you know do you need to refinance your mortgage emails or anything like that you're just going to get an email every wednesday and friday about what's going on in the world of walleye fishing and ice fishing thanks for watching this video if there's anything you want to see next drop a comment below i literally read every single one and do my best to reply and i appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to watch these goofy videos and read the email. Thank you so much, now back to fishing. <laughs>